should have known better than to let you go alone It's times like these I can't make it on my own Wasted days and sleepless nights And I can't wait to see you again I find I spend my time waiting on your call How can I tell you, babe, my back's against the wall I need you by my side to tell me it's all right I don't think I can take any more Is this love that I'm feeling? Is this love that I've been searching for? Is this love or am I dreaming? Is this love that I've been searching for? Searching for is this love or am I dreaming? This must be love because it's really got a hold on me. A hold on me. A hold on me. me. I can't stop the feeling I've been this way before. With you, I found the key to open any door. I feel my love for you grow stronger day by day. And I can't wait to see you again. So I can hold you in my arms. Is this love that I'm feeling? Is this the love that I've been searching for? Is this love? Searching for is this love that I'm feeling? Is this the love that I've been searching for? Is this love or am I dreaming? This must be love because it's really got a hold on me. A hold on me. A hold on me. Hold on me A hold on me A hold on me Okay, so you've just seen her perform. I'm now joined on the sofa by this beautiful blonde bombshell, Stacey Jackson. <laughs> Nice to meet Hello. you, Stacey. Hello, nice to meet you. Yeah, thank you for coming down and joining us. Thank you for having me. Did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, it was cool. Very stripped down yeah. version of the track. It's cool. I like doing that. Um, yeah, I saw you before this interview took place and um, you were saying that this is originally a dance track. Yeah, well, no, it's originally, mm. uh, this particular song was written by Whitesnake. It was, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, so it's a cover of a 1980s track. Uh, very hard rock ballad. So I... Uh, uh, turned it into a, a dance track, right. and um, which so your cover is originally a dance track. So my cover is really a da originally a dance track. So I, I was able to strip it back because it was originally written as a rock ballad anyway. So me and the guitar was it was easy to keep it right on target to the you know mm -hmm. to the original um, the, the original way it was done. Definitely. So, but different to when I obviously my my own songs, my original tracks that I do write as pop tunes or as dance tracks, it's much more challenging to, to take it back and scale it back and turn it into an, into an acoustic song, so. Yeah, that must be quite difficult. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because I mean, for me it was easy because I was listening to that organically because it's the first time I'd heard the track right. ever. So I hadn't actually heard. Really? Yeah, I, you, I, was, I was saying, you're probably like <laughs> two years old when the original track came out. <laughs> she flatters me. She thinks I'm about 22. Uh, Twelve. Twelve. <laughs> right, okay. Hey, yeah, yeah. Funny, funny you should say that. Actually, the first question is um, just basically pays pays tribute to the fact that you're you're a juggling a music career, you're a wife, you're a mother of four, and yet you remain so beautiful. How how, how do you do it? <laughs> what is the secret? Chasing around four kids. Chasing around four yeah. kids. That's it's good, right. Yeah. That's a good answer. Keeps me young. Yeah. yeah I mean, and my kids are spaced out, and uh, no, they're not spaced out. They're spaced mm. out in age, mm. and so. I have like a four-year-old all the way up to a 16-year-old. I think that 
there's you know bigger kids bigger problems you know so I think I'm, I'm my, my brain is always switched on and I think that's what keeps me keeps me going I, I don't have downtime I don't even know how to have downtime my kids were on half term and I was like shouldn't I be on a beach somewhere but like no I, I'm I think just going and going and going and I think the one thing that does get compromised is probably my sleep okay yeah <laughs> Which is important, right? Which is important. Mm. So when I'm on airplanes, that's when I sleep. You sleep a lot, yeah. Uh, on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody, no, no children screaming. Well, at least on my own. <sighs> so I get to sleep. What, what triggered the move from suburban life to becoming a music artist? Uh, suburban. Well, I, I, I've never been suburban-ish. I, I've always, I grew up always in a, I was born in Montreal, lived in the town. Right. Then moved to Manhattan. So I was always living in like the hustle and the bustle moved to London so and proper live in you know central London so I've never been a suburban -y kind of mummy but I've always been um, very involved with the kids in their school and you know I was tagged as soccer mom rocker mom for a soccer while because I would go to the soccer games and and you know be on the PTA and and I, I'm still very much involved in fact you know I go in and read to the kids in the, in the school and I just I can't ever let that go and yeah. that's very much a part of me and I think especially when it comes to writing songs it gives me a lot of stuff to write about I guess just mm. about being you know happy yeah. and you know and I'm living my dream right now so I think that it all comes together as one whole if I didn't have that part I don't think the music would come together. I think everything that I do in my life sure. makes me who I am. So, so, so if, you, if, if there are any, like, what have been your biggest highlights to date, musically? Musically, okay, because mm. obviously I would have said getting married and having <laughs> my four children. Um, musically, Me, my biggest me. meeting you. Yeah. Um, no, my music, like, it's all been within a year that this has started for me. Um, you know, obviously as a mom, I was on a long hiatus and yeah. then recording my first album, which was a Motown album. Wow. And it was a charity Love album for a, cha for a charity called um, uh, Music for Youth. And it was a rocked out Motown album. Mm. So I, I got a whole bunch of kids from all over the UK to come in to, we recorded at the Metropolis Studios. And um, we, so I sprinkled a whole bunch of these musicians, kids musicians, um, all over the, the, the CD. And so I had, choir and strings and guitarists and anyway what ended up happening was one song we released as a single and um they friends of mine said well why don't you set, give them to a dj and see if they can rip, remix your vocal and i've never done this before so you have to understand this is coming from someone who's <laughs> been like in motown bands and bands and rock bands and i'm like okay let's see and sure enough um <laughs> it got remixed fast forward and um it went to number 17 on the club charts. This is like a Motown cover song I had done with the kids from the charity. Wow. So um, then I had another song which we released also from the same album that broke the top 10. So I'm sitting between Lady Gaga and the Scissor Sisters on the charts. And this all happened just in a year, like one year ago. So lo fast forward, um, mm. producers and DJs are calling me and saying, well, your vocal suits this kind of stuff. Fancy co-writing and seeing what we put together. Mm. Um, so I, I've, uh, from that, I've gotten to work with some unbelievable talent, namely... Hold that thought, actually, because yeah. you, um, you've done a video with Snoop Dogg. You, well, I was about to say, namely oh, okay. Snoop Dogg. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, we... I, sorry, sorry to steal your moment there. Yeah, namely Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I was very lucky. I'd written the song called Live It Up based on my life, based on, like, someone who's taking the time, now is the time, to go out and live it up because... I'm not getting any younger. I've got four kids, and like, if I don't do it now, it's just if I at least give it a try. Yeah. So I wrote the song, um, and um, my manager had said, "Well, I had wrote it with a verse that had with a rapper in mind." Right. And we were thinking, young, up and coming. Tiny you know, temper. Tiny Temper was yeah, actually yeah. on the list, funnily enough. Mm. Um, and you know, I also thought, well, maybe we should revisit the music for youth kids. You know, like I, I didn't know what to do with this song. So manager said, well, how about we, I, he'd done some work with Snoop before in the past and said, well, how about we send it off to Snoop Dogg? And we all looked at him like he got crazy. <laughs> and he said, um, no, let's send it off because if he hates it, then you're no worse off where you are right now. So this, you have nothing to lose. Mm. Five days later, I'm on a plane to Boston. He loved the track, loved the whole thing that wow. I've been doing, like the whole, you know, living my dream. And if you if you listen to his rap, it's actually very personal to me. We spent a lot yeah, of time yeah, together in Boston. Anyway, so that's it. and so what ended up happening was they now the United States is saying like, well, why don't, why can't we get your music? So um, 
I did it. I'm, the song I just did for you today is a cover, and I think um, I my intention with that track is when I took it, my my influ my inspiration was you know Eric Pride's song "Call on Me," that video, really sexy okay, video yeah, 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 with yeah, yeah, the yeah. women in their aerobics class. I, I don't know, know. y'all must have seen it, guys. <laughs> I'm sure. And um, anyway, so I took the inspiration from that. I wanted sexy, and I wanted dancing, and I want like I just wanted it to A be lot about of guys. <laughs> no, no, just I wanted it to be about the, the song, yeah. you know, I want, and I wanted to change up the song enough. And also, you know, the song is very timely. Um, uh, David Coverdale and Whitesnake is actually being, on, they're on tour now, funnily enough. Okay, cool. And um, so it, it just, it was the right thing. And I think mm. for the U.S. market, introducing me for the first time, it, it's easier with a song that people might be somewhat familiar with. Yes. Hence, coming in with the cover and then, then we'll release uh, the rest of my original tracks, hopefully, to the rest of the world. Yeah. So right now it's just limited to the UK. So just briefly, if we can touch up on it, um, yep. just your influences and that. How, how, what, 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 what got you to this point? And who inspired uh, you most? I pull from everything. Like really? I can hear a song and be like, oh, I like that riff, or you know, and it could be a hard rock song. I mean, I I grew up in the '80s, so like I love you know the big hair, heavy metal, <laughs> hard rock. I also, but my, my earlier childhood was like all Motown, like my parents would listen to Love like that. Supremes and Jackson 5. I knew every Supreme song by the time I was three, every lyric, okay? So like, I, I think that by- Stacey like, Ross. Exactly, Stacey Ross. I wish. Um, but I think that any artist, by being able to be influenced by a, a sort of mix of different genres of music and being able to pull, to pull it together is what I think will make a very mm. intre interesting artist and hopefully, as I produce my music and I set it out for people to listen to it, they'll be like, oh, okay, I understand where she's coming from with that. And yeah. So, yeah, it's Definitely. everything from every genre. Is so uh, we're sadly near at the end of the uh, interview, okay. so I'm just gonna ask you one last question. Um, what are your plans for 2012? Definitely uh, global. Global. <laughs> global. Ah, We're going to global. Of out, get out of the UK. Yeah. Uh, no, the UK <laughs> people have been really, really, really great for me. Honestly, I've been touring and touring and touring. I've done a lot of gay prides, oh, funny okay. enough. Yeah, because my music is in the dance industry, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so I've done London and Brighton and uh, Manchester and I mean, like all of them. And I'm really very grateful because I have a big supportive network um, okay. in the UK, which is terrific. Um, but we're going to see what happens mm -hmm. to me outside of the UK and we're going you know, global. We're going global. That's, that's the it. plan. <laughs> well, as, as long as I stay grounded, even yeah. though I am global, that's yeah. the trick is being yeah. able to balance it all because, you know, I do have to be at home with my kids. Yeah, so yeah. how much global can I be while still, you know, being going maternal. to the soccer field? <laughs> yeah. That's that's the trick question. Listen, it's so. been a pleasure. It's been great chatting to you. You too. Like, you didn't do much chatting. I did all the talking. <laughs> Couldn't get a word in anyways, mate. <laughs> 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 Anyway, um, thank you so much for coming. Thank down. you so much for I'll having hold me. On me. I'll hold on me. I'll hold on me. I'll hold on me. I'll hold on me.